Hey guys, welcome back to a different type of video. Normally I am doing away match vlogs. Next season I am doing home match vlogs as well. Uh, I do apologise about Coventry and Huddersfield not going on the channel. Um, Coventry was very, very low quality as I was rushing to try and actually get to the coach, which I almost missed. And then um, Hull, not Hull, Huddersfield, my phone um, did die. So I need to either check my power bank or make sure my power bank has charge. But I'm going to be going through uh, Stoke City's transfer window this January. And um, we have recently just had confirmation around about an hour ago that David Okabue has gone on a one month loan um, to Chester on a work experience. So um, hopefully he has a good, you know, run out for Chester. Good luck to him there for the next month. Um, and additionally, as it stands, we only have 15, 16 players on contract at the end of the season. So um, we're going to need some contracts signed as backups if summer transfers don't work out. But let's head straight into it with the transfer ins. So the first transfer in actually happened, I believe, before the transfer window even happened. It was Frank Fielding coming in to Stoke City. Uh, a very, very experienced goalkeeper at the age of 33. He's played for a lot of clubs um, that are actually pretty decent. He's played for Blackpool, Blackburn, played for Derby, played for Bristol City, Millwall. He was actually starting keeper for Millwall quite a bit. Um, but then, obviously, fallen out of um, favour with the manager. He's not kicked a ball for us. I don't think he's ever going to kick a ball for us. Um, he's come in really as like a backup if any of our other keepers get injured. But I think he's going to be here on sort of a training type of role. Uh, sort of a coaching role. But it's a pretty decent transfer. It's something that we needed. Andy was a free agent. So we basically it's spending no money on him. Just paying his wages, which I don't think would be very expensive anyway. Um, next transfer in was um, an end of loan for Tom Edwards, uh, currently linked to going back to the MLS. I do not know when the MLS transfer window closes, but apparently he's got another um, year loan linked back to the MLS with New York Red Bulls. I don't see why New York Red Bulls don't just try and buy the lad. Uh, he's very, very good as a defender. We thought he'd come back in as, you know, trying to fight for that right back spot from Tommy Smith. But um, looks like he isn't fighting for that spot, um, considering he is injured. He came back. He was in contention to start against Fulham, I believe it was, and then picked up an injury. Um, doing very well over in the MLS. Been watching some MLS football when New York had been on just to watch him play. But Tom Edwards, um, hopefully he can try and find, uh, find a way into the Stoke starting team. Um, when Tommy Smith's contract runs out, or we sell him on. Uh, and if he doesn't go over to the MLS with New York Red Bulls. Second um, loan transfer that was finished was Blondie, NEA and Cuckoo. Um, or Nukue, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, I'll just say any in Cuckoo. But um, two games in the EFL Trophy, one game in the Carabao Cup, conceding, around, conceding I believe, 12 goals. Um, we heard on the Stoke podcast that I am on uh, with Mike and Dan that apparently the goals that he conceded weren't of his fault. It was the defence that they had in their goalkeeper that they currently have as their number one player is like been number one for three years he's been the player of the year for three years so um hopefully he can try and fight a way into the team but it doesn't really look likely hopefully we can send him out on loan again in the summer uh, maybe even sell him on because it doesn't look like he's ever going to get near that first team uh, he's been training with the first team obviously but i don't think he's ever going to really make it into that first team with um joe bursic being that number one spot right first proper transfer in uh, out of six this transfer window is Phil Jagielka in from Derby. Now, the reason Phil Jagielka came in was because obviously Derby have got their administration issues going on. And I th I read something where it said like they weren't allowed to decline any transfer offers that came in. That included money due to financial fair play. He's played very, very well for us. He's played every single minute since he's come in, I do believe. Um, he's obviously played for Everton, he's played for Sheffield United, he's played for Derby. Those are the three clubs he's played for. He played for Stoke in his youth career, I believe that's where he did start. His contract does end up in the summer. I believe um, we're going to extend it for maybe another six months as um, a Sutar replacement is what I've said. He's a very, very solid defender and I believe he's going to you know, help us stay up this season, hopefully push for playoffs. And not too much I can really say about him. He's a very, very solid centre-back. He's a no-nonsense defender. He came in um, and he's doing what a defender should do. Um, he's not like a James Chester uh, where you feel like he's a liability. When he's on the ball, you know we can do something with it. Second transfer in was Lewis Baker. I said on a post I did on Twitter, this is all on Twitter. I'm just explaining it in more detail. I'll leave that link down below. It's a thread on Stoke City's transfers. 
Um, he's been frozen out of Chelsea's team, basically. He's been out on so many loan spells. He's been out on loan to Sheffield Wednesday and to MK Dons, then Vitesse, Middlesbrough, Leeds, Reading, Dusseldorf, Trabant, Spore as recent. And now he's at Stoke. Um, home debut scored an absolutely amazing finish against um, Fulham for about 25, 30 yards out. Brilliant goal. Played four games um, now. He's played 80% of our minutes. And he has been an absolutely amazing player for us as of late. Hopefully he can continue this form. I don't want to be one of those players who comes into the club and then, you know, goes off the boil a little bit. Hopefully he finds his form and hopefully he can stay in Michael O'Neill's 11 because at the moment I really do like him. He's got the number 42 shirt and he's playing like a Yaya Torre at the moment. Third transfer was Taylor Harwood Bellis in from Man City. Uh, on loan as a centre-back obviously been out on loan to Anderlecht and Blackburn Blackburn really loved him as a player um, They were kind of jealous that we managed to get him back and then Anderlecht he was frozen out the side um, Due to not getting back in time from a from an England under 21 qualifying match I believe for the under 21 World Cup, but he's been brilliantly He has played absolutely brilliant played away for conference league this season as well He's played hundred percent of the minutes since he's come here he is an absolutely solid defender at the back He's shown what maturity has for a lot of it's such young age he has so much maturity about him. He's no nonsense. He knows what he's doing. Obviously, he's young. He's going to make one or two mistakes. But I can't think of any as of late. He is absolutely brilliant. And hopefully, we can make it permanent in the summer if we do go up. Same here with Jaden Philogene Bidens. Um, or Bidace. He is absolutely brilliant. He's only made one appearance in the Premier League where he didn't really play much. So we decided game. He didn't play much for the 23s as well for for Aston Villa but in the games he's played he's played three minutes uh three games for us 46 percent of the minutes had a starting spot against Huddersfield did pretty well he's showing what he can do I've not seen we obviously we haven't seen too much of him he hasn't played too much this season but um hopefully he does get more chances to start with Wright Phillips obviously we're rotating them at the moment I do believe he plays on the left or the right or even down the middle as a center attacking midfielder but I think Nick Powell's going to take that spot they've also got Mario Varanchich who can fill in there very, very decent signing. Hopefully, we can see what promise he does have here while he is at Stoke during his loan spell. He's, he's doing what he can do. And then, obviously, he's young. Uh, he's 19. Um, same as Taylor Harwood Bellis, who I thought... Yeah, he's 20, Taylor Harwood Bellis. Uh, Jaden is uh, 19. So, hopefully, we can see what promise these two youngsters do have. Next one, uh, people might recognize from the Sunderland Till I Die Netflix show. Uh, Josh Madger, who has come in from Bordeaux. I believe he's had an injury all season. He's only played three games. But when he has played, um, when I saw him play for Sunderland, when I saw him play um, for Bordeaux, when he was fit, he is absolutely um, a clinical player um, whose value is around about 3.6 at the moment. It was around about 5 million, uh, even 6 million when he was at Fulham on loan. But he's shown what he can do. And I think... He's the type of striker, I think, if we do manage to make it permanent in the summer, it's going to be, you know, sort of like a Fletcher replacement. He's a player who, when I've seen him play, he can hold up the ball. He can shoot from distance. He can pretty much do everything with the ball. But um, at the moment, it's like, who who's he going to come in for? Is he going to come in as a Jacob Brown replacement for at the moment? Um, is he going to rotate with Jacob Brown? Is he um, just going to be on the bench? I don't know what's going to happen with Josh Madger. I really hope he does play quite a bit. He's a player I'm looking really, really forward forward to seeing play. Final deadline day signing. So Josh Magic came on deadline day, and so did Liam Moore, the Reading centre back. Um, 17 games a season. Um, at the moment, Reading aren't really doing the best. He's coming on a loan swap. So um, he's played for a few good clubs in his time. He's played for Leicester. He's played for Bradford. He's played for Brentford. He's played for Bristol City, and most recently, he did play for Reading. Um, he did get stripped of captaincy. He did say he wanted to move on. He can play centre-back as well as right-back. So he could come in as a Tommy Smith replacement at the moment. Because um, Tommy Smith's performance of late has not been the best. But he seems like a decent player. Reading fans say that he's not really the best of player in the world. But hopefully we are proven wrong and we can see what quality Liam Moore does have. I believe he was in the championship team the seasons a few years back. So um, hopefully we can see what quality he does have as a defender right on to the transfer departures first departure was january 4th leo ostergaard um leaving the club he is an absolute passionate footballer he knows what he wants to do sadly he has gone out to genoa now um on his debut he did score in the copper italia 
but when he has played for us he was absolutely brilliant but I think Michael O'Neill wanted a defender on the left hand side who's uh, left footed rather than right footed obviously Ben Wilmot's right footed so he put him on the right side of centre back he wasn't a centre centre back and he didn't really work when he was on the left side of defence but it's one of them where he's a lone player never fall in love with a lone player I fell in love with him he was absolutely brilliant while he was here but um, yeah hopefully he does succeed um, for Brighton if he can get into that first team maybe do you know we'll buy him we don't know but um, Leo Osteard I'm going to miss him as a player Absolutely passionate, loved him in the dressing room. I'll always remember that celebration he did against Swansea when he scored. Whenever we scored, even when he wasn't involved in it, he'd get the crowd raring and he'd always make sure he knew what he wanted to do. Second transfer departure was Alfie Dowdy out on loan to Championship Club at Cardiff. Uh, made 12 appearances in the Championship this season, 11 of them at Stoke. Um, made one appearance in the FA Cup and four appearances in the EFL Cup. Most of those minutes he did make in the Championship were off the bench. I don't believe he did start. He started once in that time. Um, but he's a brilliant, brilliant player, obviously, from Charlton. That's where we did sign him from. Absolutely brilliant player. I love Alfie Dowdy. He's quick. Uh, he knows what he wants to do. He knows how to pass the ball. He knows how to shoot the ball. He knows how to cross the ball. He is absolutely brilliant as a left wing back. And hopefully when he comes back from um, Cardiff, he can fight for that starting spot from... Um, Josh Tymon. Next chance of departure is that swap deal with Liam Moore for Tom Ince. Tom Ince has now gone out on loan for Redden until the end of the season. His contract is up in the summer. Um, form as of late has been pretty, pretty decent. He scored uh, five goals this season, uh, 11 appearances in the league, only 14 of them being in start 11, but that was of recent times. Obviously, can play right winger, left winger, attacking midfielder. He's absolutely brilliant. Played for a lot of notable clubs in his time, as we do know. But um, he's gone off the boil recently, he's getting older, he's about 30 now. So he's not as young as he used to be. And hopefully he can find the form as of late, because I'm a fan of Tom Ince. Obviously he's had on and off games while he's been here, but I'm a massive fan of Tom Ince. I always have been. Hopefully he can find that form as of late, and towards the end of his career he can help Stoke get towards that top six. Next up is Adam Davies out Sheffield United. I was a bit confused about this at first, but then I realised it's mostly for financial fair play. Um, he's only gone out for 250 grand. Very, very, you know, low transfer figure. Saying that, we did get him in on a free, so we have made profit on him. But uh, he's one of them. He's obviously been our starting keeper as of late due to Bo Joe Bursic being injured. 15 games, 12 goals conceded, five clean sheets. Absolutely amazing. Was a player of the month, got a player, got a team of the week which was even on FIFA, which was um, hard to do for a championship player. Um, managed to get an absolutely stellar performance against QPR. Hopefully it does succeed for him at Sheffield United. I'm surprised he's been taken so well by the fans, considering he's played for Sheffield Wednesday and he's played for Barnsley. So hopefully um, he does succeed for him and hopefully he doesn't get picked when he plays when we play Sheffield um, later on in the season. Final two are Danny Barr, who's gone to Sunderland, had a great debut, picked up a man in the match performance. And then um, conceding an own goal in a 6-0 thumping from um, Bolton. We sold him for one point. Uh, I believe it was a free transfer. I'm unsure. It's been an undisclosed fee. Um, but he is a good centre-back. Played for some notable clubs as well. Wolves, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday. So he's one of those players who um, you're surprised he's been taken on so well, Middlesbrough as well, but he is he was solid while he was here, he was a great valiant to the club, he knew what he wanted to do, he's a no-nonsense centre-back, he knew what he wanted to do, but um, I believe he's gone down to a level which is, you know, more for him, he's not really a championship defender anymore, hopefully he can find um, the form of old, and hopefully he has a good end to his career, apparently he's always wanted to sort of go to Sunderland um, obviously they are having a massive rebuild job from being relegated from the Premier League to the Championship and now um, have gone down to League 1 so hopefully they can get back to the Championship uh, final one um, apart from Nathan Broom who was a 20 under 23 goalkeeper who's gone to Wimbledon to really start his um, career uh, wasn't ever going to really take Joe Bursic's spot as number one he's going to be number one for years to come Final transfer though was Sam Surridge to Nottingham Forest on a permanent deal, uh, two million around about we've sold him for, and 
it's one of them, you know, we bought him in from Bournemouth, we expect him to do so well, 20 appearances uh, on and off the bench, 2 goals, 1 assist, 3 yellow cards, 1 red card, he was a bit of a hothead, uh, 2 goals and 4 appearances in the cup, 1 goal uh, in 1 appearance in the under 23s. He's a young player, he was what we thought Michael O'Neill would have wanted, but he just never really materialised. Um, but yeah, hopefully he does succeed. I was a fan of Sam Surridge. Um, but I think ever since he got that red card against Peterborough, Michael O'Neill's just not been in favour of him. He's a bit of a hot... Excuse me. He's a bit of a hothead. But um, hopefully he can find his form and hopefully he doesn't score when we play them um, next. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, like I've said. And um, please share this around. Listen to the podcast down below. Next episode is out uh, on Friday where we are going to be talking about Wigan in the FA Cup. They're bringing a full house. I don't know how many we're going to have, but we're definitely not going to sell out um, at all. Maybe not even sell, you know, 4,000 like they are. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I'll see you guys uh, in the next away vlog. See ya.